Hi, my name is Justine Harkness, and in this video, we're going to look at the reactant quotient Q and look at how it's both similar to and different from the equilibrium constant. The reaction quotient Q follows the exact same rules as the equilibrium constant. So Q will be a ratio of the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. And just like in KEQ expressions, the Q expression will not include pure liquids or solids. Furthermore, the coefficients in the balanced chemical reaction will become the exponents in the Q expression. So you might be asking yourself, if KEQ and Q follow the exact same rules, then what is the difference between these two things? And let's look at a real life example of this. So say we are we want to go on a vacation. The vacation here is our destination. For a reaction, the destination is equilibrium. And if you are, say, going to a lovely beach in Florida, no matter where you are, your destination is always that same beautifully drawn beach. Q the reaction quotient tells us where we are in relation to equilibrium. So if we start driving, we get in our car, we start driving, we have our first reaction quotient. This tells us exactly where we are at this specific location. But as we start driving, we're getting closer to our destination, our value of Q, that ratio of products to reactants is changing. We start to get closer, so we have more products, a little less reactants. We continue driving. We have a new reaction quotient, a new ratio of products to reactants. And finally, we reach our destination. Woo, we're at the beach. When we reach equilibrium, our Q value will be equal to the KEQ. That's how we know we are at equilibrium. So the difference between KEQ and Q is Q is the ratio of products at any point in the reaction. KEQ is the ratio of products to reactants specifically at equilibrium. So while KEQ is a constant value, Q will change as the reaction progresses. And we can look at these changes by looking at a graph of the reaction quotient over time. Now in this graph on the left, we are plotting the concentrations um, of our both reactants and products over time. Now in the first roughly half of this, notice that the concentrations are changing very rapidly. The concentration of our reactants is decreasing, concentration of product is increasing. And this corresponds to a rather rapid change in the reaction quotient. However, as things start to level off in the second half of this reaction, notice that the value of the reaction quotient starts to level off. Once the Q levels off and essentially plateaus, the reaction is at equilibrium. And that is when KEQ is equal to Q. The concentrations will no longer be changing. So let's take a look at a example question and apply this. So this question gives us a KEQ of 4.84 and a balanced reaction and asks us first to write out the expression for Q. Now remember, Q follows the exact same rules as KEQ, so Q will be our ratio of products to reactants. We have ammonia as one of our products. Notice it has an implied coefficient of one, so we don't need to write anything for the exponent. We have carbon monoxide. And then as our reactant, we have this HCONH2. So this would be our Q expression. Now we need to draw a graph of the reaction quotient over time, given that we start with only reactant. Well, let's think about how this is going to work. At the very start of the reaction, 
We don't have any product. We have just reactant. So without any product, Q would be equal to zero. At equilibrium, KEQ will be equal to Q, so Q would be equal to 4.84. So let's start by drawing our axes for our graph. As we always label our axes, so we'd have time on the x-axis, maybe in uh, seconds for our unit. And then on our y-axis, we would have our reaction quotient Q. And we can just uh, number this as well. It would go from 1 to 5. And now let's draw in our curve. So we're starting out at time 0 with a Q equal to 0. And as the reaction progresses, we'll start to make more product. We'll start to use up that reactant. So our Q value will start to increase. And then as we get to equilibrium, that Q will plateau out at 4.84. So we could say around you know, this region, we start to reach equilibrium. Then as we plateau here, we are now at equilibrium. Q is not changing and Q is equal to KEQ. So now you should be more comfortable describing the differences and similarities between KEQ and Q.